This lesson is about transformations of functions. We will use this function here just so that we can practice using function notation and identifying input and output values from the graph. So remember that when we plot a graph and we have pairs of coordinates, this is the result of applying a function. The coordinates here, negative 2, 2, mean that when we input a value of negative 2, the output of the function is 2. Another way of saying that is f of negative 2 is 2. When we apply this function to an input value of negative 2, we get an output value of 2. When we apply an input value of negative 1, the output is 3. So f of negative 1 is 3. An input value of 0 gives an output of 4. An input of 1 gives an output of 5. An input of 2 gives an output of 2. An input of 3 gives an output of negative 1. And an input of 4 gives an output of 4. So even though this is not a recognisable function, we can still use this function terminology. We have pairs of values, input and output. When we apply this function to the input values, we can determine the output values. Now we're going to see what happens when we transform the function in a couple of different ways. Firstly, if this is y equals f of x, what will y equals f of negative 4x look like? So we're going to take some x values, multiply them by negative 4, and then apply the function. I'll start with when x equals 0. Negative 4x is also 0. And f of 0, we know that to be 4. So 0, 4 is still on the transformed function. What if we take x to be negative 1? Then negative 4x is 4 and f of 4 is 4. So negative 1, 4 is on the transformed function. Now I want to know what happens in between these two points. So I'm going to take an x value of negative 0 0.5, multiply by negative 4 gives 2, and f of 2 is 2. So when x is negative 0 0.5, the transformed function has a value of 2. What about positive 0 0.5? Negative 4 times 0 0.5 is negative 2. And f of negative 2 is 2. So when x is 0 0.5, the value of the transformed function is 2. Now because I'm multiplying my x values by negative 4 each time, I'm also going to plot when x is 0 0.25 and negative 0 0.25 and also when x is 0 0.75 and negative 0 0.75. Now negative 3 isn't in the original domain so 0 0.75 is not going to be in the domain here so we've found an endpoint of the function f of 3 is negative 1 now we have enough points to join them up and show the shape of the function. And you can see that it appears to be a squashed in version of the original function. In fact, we call this a dilation. Compared with the original function, which had domain from negative 2 to 4, y equals f of negative 4x has a domain from negative 1 to positive 0 0.5, which is a quarter of the width of the original function. So we say the dilation has a scale factor of a quarter, and because we multiplied by negative 4, the function has also been reflected in the y-axis. I should just add as well that that dilation is parallel to the x-axis. It hasn't been stretched vertically at all. It has the same range as the original function, but it has been brought closer to the y-axis by a scale factor of a quarter. So that's a horizontal dilation or a dilation parallel to the x-axis.
Next, I'm going to look at the transformation from y equals f of x to y equals f of 2x plus 5. So I'll start by choosing some x values. Each of these x values is doubled, and then we add 5, and then we apply the function to those input values. f of negative 2 is 2, f of 1 is 5, f of 3 is negative 1 and f of 4 is 4. So you can see why I chose those x values because I wanted to choose values which would give me the vertices of the function. So in my transformed function when x is negative 3.5 f of 2x plus 5 is 2 input negative 2 output 5 input negative 1, output negative 1, and input negative 0 0.5, output 4. This function has also experienced a horizontal dilation, scale factor a half. You can see that the function is half as wide as the original. But before the horizontal dilation was applied, the function translated to the left five units. And it's important that the order is correct here. If we take the original function and dilate it by a scale factor of a half, it means that every point is closer to the y-axis. It's halfway as far from the y-axis. So this point here at 4, 4 is now at 2, 4. And this point at 3, negative 1 is now at 1.5, negative 1. And this point at 1, 5 is now at 0 0.55. And this point at negative 2, 2 is now at negative 1, 2. So that's what the function would look like had we applied a horizontal dilation scale factor a half. Now to get from there, to our function f of 2x plus 5, we then need to translate 2.5 units to the left. And this would be a way of describing the transformation from y equals f of x to y equals f of 2x plus 5. Horizontal dilation scale factor a half, followed by a horizontal translation to the left 2.5 units. However, the more conventional way is to translate first to the left five units. So if we take those vertices, translating to the left five units reduces each x-coordinate by five. And then a dilation scale factor of a half halves each of the x-values and takes us to the transformed function. So we translate 5 units left and then dilate parallel to the x-axis, scale factor a half. In summary, if we're transforming the graph of a function y equals f of x to the graph of y equals f of bx, then it's a horizontal dilation parallel to the x-axis with a scale factor 1 over b. And if b is negative, we also reflect in the y-axis. If we're transforming y equals f of x to y equals f of bx takes c, then it's a horizontal translation c units to the right, and then a horizontal dilation as above. Now notice in the previous example, we were transforming to f of 2x plus 5, and the translation was 5 units to the left. That's because in this example, the value of c is negative 5. Notice that the general form is subtract c, not plus c. This could be written as f of 2x take negative 5. So the value of c is negative 5, which means we go 5 units to the left instead of 5 units to the right.